On September 23rd, 2008, we were suspended again because a creationist just couldn't take seeing their nonsense refuted. After a slight delay due to YouTube forgetting to forward our counter notice to the disillusioned creationist du jour, we had... And that creationist was... Ken Ham of Answers in Magic... I'm sorry, Answers in Genesis, same thing, really. Anyway, yeah, um, apparently we made him cry. Eh. We'll deal with silly Ken later. Anyway, let's get back to good old Kent. Hovenism number four. Kent Hovind takes on entropy. By the way, if the Big Bang Theory were true, the matter would be evenly distributed, and it's not. It's lumpy, called galaxies, and in zillions of miles and nothing, called voids. Well, if your myopia limits your knowledge of the universe to the local space around us, Mr. Hovind would be correct. However, that would require reliance on a straw man argument. Commonly referred to as the end of greatness, the universe becomes remarkably homogenized at the scale of about 300 million light years. This observation is a major prediction of the Big Bang Theory. The Big Bang Theory is a dud, and they've known it for years. Even famous astronomer Hoyle said, I have little hesitation in saying that a sickly pall now hangs over the Big Bang Theory. Fred Hoyle coined the term Big Bang as an offhand description of the theory that was competing and ultimately displaced his steady-state hypothesis. They would have thrown it out a long time ago, except they don't have a replacement theory yet. Um, remember Hoyle from the previous sentence? Hoyle proposed and continues to espouse the notion of a steady-state universe, one which does not expand or contract. Unfortunately for Hoyle, the universe is expanding, leading to the rejection of the steady-state hypothesis. Other than, you know, God did it and they sure don't want that one. <laughs> That's not a scientific theory, nor even a theory in the colloquial sense. It's a rather poor argument from ignorance, and it's just sad. The second law of thermodynamics tells us everything tends toward disorder. In simplicity, entropy is the measure of the unavailability of the energy in a system to do work. It describes the tendency of heat to flow from hot regions to cold regions, homogenizing the system by allowing energy to be distributed in the greatest number of microstates. The notion that entropy is a measure of disorder is one of the more pervasive misconceptions regarding thermodynamics. Everything is falling apart. Mr. Hoven confused everything with his argument against modern science. If you leave something alone for a while, it's going to rot or rust or die or break down or fall apart. I bet you're curious about what this has to do with the Big Bang Theory. Well, so am I. Um, if you have any ideas, let me know. Just about everybody here has a job because of the second law of thermodynamics. Well, cleaning up the disorder brought about by the Bush administration will create many jobs. Um, please remember to vote. If you stop and think about it. And you spend most of your day trying to overcome the second law of thermodynamics. Please help overcome such nonsense. Vote. Seriously. Vote. How many know what I'm talking about? Okay. Clean the house, fix the car, clean the house. It's <laughs> always something to do, right? Like voting. Um, the Bible teaches the second law. In Hebrews 1, it says, The heavens are the works of thy hands. They shall perish. They wax old as doth a garment. Does anyone know what his point is supposed to be? Fortune cookies literally make the same level of vague predictions. But at least with a fortune cookie, you get some lucky numbers and, you know, a Chinese vocab word. And a cookie. See, nothing gets better by itself. Except, you know, diamonds and, well, all other crystals, you know, the generalized tools of Satan. Take a look at your hairdo when you wake up in the morning. You will see exactly what I'm talking about. Everything tends toward chaos automatically, right? Remember snow? I suppose it's the new tool of the devil, since it apparently contradicts the Bible. But the textbook says, oh, boys and girls, we're getting better. Humans probably evolved from bacteria. That lived more than four billion years ago. Um, sharing a common ancestor with bacteria does not make humans better. Given the vast majority of substrates utilized in environments colonized, bacteria are far more successful than humans. We kind of suck. Was your great 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 grandpa a bacteria? 
If Mr. Oven was a five-year-old child confused by evolution, such a question might be a humorous misconception. However, such gross ignorance is just shameful for an adult. The evolutionists will say, well, now, Mr. Oven, you don't understand. Grade school children would say that. Penguins would as well, if they could speak English. See, if you add energy, you can overcome the second law of thermodynamics. A person can walk into a room that's disorganized, and by adding energy, they can organize it. Well, I understand, but you have very flawed logic here. Well, no kidding. Opening a thermodynamic system to allow the input of energy from an outside source could reduce the entropy of the system. It doesn't overcome entropy. The ability of the second system to do work has been reduced since it has done work on the first. It's sort of a double-edged sword. They'll say, the Earth receives energy from the Sun, and therefore the second law doesn't apply because the Earth is an open system. Well, that's because the Earth is an open system, receiving a constant flow of energy from the Sun. Well, I understand real well, but you have, still have a flaw in your logic. You see, the whole universe is a closed system. For a thermodynamic system to reach entropic equilibrium, it has to be closed and static. Unfortunately for Mr. Hoven, the universe is expanding. It's not his fault that his knowledge of physics is nearly 80 years out of date. Well, I suppose it is. For the Earth to get energy from the sun, the sun has to lose it. Through the process of nuclear fusion, the sun converts 3.4 times 10 to the 38th protons into helium every second, releasing lots and lots of energy. So where did the sun get it? We call it gravity. Secondly, adding energy is destructive unless there's a mechanism to utilize the energy. Um, no. See, the Japanese added a whole bunch of energy to Pearl Harbor one day. They did not organize anything, did they? Excuse me while I get out my soapbox for a moment. Mr. Hovind is a douchebag. 2,345 American military personnel and 57 civilians were killed, with 1,247 American military personnel and 35 civilians wounded. Uh, 64 Japanese military personnel were also killed during the attack on Pearl Harbor. Mocking the deaths of others as a result of war for cheap laughs is not simply insensitive, it's vile and disgusting. We returned the favor a couple years later and added a whole bunch of energy to Hiroshima and Nagasaki. And we did not organize anything over there either. Let's scratch that douchebag part and let's just classify him as an amoral douchebag. 140,000 Japanese were killed in the bombings of Hiroshima. 80,000 were killed in the bombing of Nagasaki. 13 American POWs were also killed by the bombings. The casualties were overwhelmingly of those of non-combatants. For making light of the deaths of nearly a quarter million people, Mr. Hovind is the most vile and disgusting human I can really think of at the moment. The sun does add energy to the earth, I agree, but it's destructive. You know, following the previous douchebaggery, this ignorance isn't even worth comment. The sun's energy will destroy the roof on your house. And if you don't fix it, it'll destroy the entire house. If nobody was allowed to touch the highway system in California, nobody touch it for 200 years. Much of it you would not be able to find. And most of it you wouldn't be able to drive on in less than 100 years. It's all falling apart. The sun's energy will destroy the roof on your car. The sun's energy will destroy the paint job on your car. It'll destroy everything. There's only one thing that can actually use the sun's energy, and that is chlorophyll. If it weren't for chlorophyll and plants, the sun's energy would make the earth like the moon. And by the way, one plant cell is more complex than an entire city. And there are zillions of plant cells out there. You know, the stupid, it, it burns, it's that bad. Wouldn't that make... I don't know, a city with numerous plants, each composed of billions of plant cells, much more complex than a single plant cell. It's, it's like addition, really. It, it's just addition at this point. Do you realize that the Republican vice presidential candidate believes this complete and utter nonsense, while the Republican presidential candidate 
openly panders to people who reject science in favor of this delusion, please vote. Please help get the Emerald douchebags out of the federal government. Vote. I've seen your flag on the marble arch. Love is not a victory march. It's a cone and it's a broken.